Hi, my name is Brian Gray from Dupre Equipment, and today we're going to go through the Steambox Steam Cleaner. This comes in 110 volts or 220 volt versions. Uh, basically, they're going to be very similar functionality, just different uh, powers. The machine starts with the power switch in the back left corner. This one here is the on and off switch, so this is the main power to the whole system. See the lights start to come on when you turn that on. We now have three switches on the right side. The main power switch to the unit itself. The boiler power switch, so you have to turn that on for it to actually heat up. And then the third one is an optional switch. This is for if you use the direct water connection at the back. So if you connect it to a hose, you don't actually have to fill up the, the water tanks. You can have a continuous, uh, continuous feed of water. If you do that, you then push this button here and that'll basically switch it to uh, that system. On the left side, we have three different lights and, and sensors. So the left side tells that the machine is turned on. The middle will tell you that the steam is ready. This light will come on when the steam temperature and the pressure is at the right amount. Here, we have the low water light. So if you are using the water tank, then this light will come on when you need to refill it and an audible alarm with the beeping will also sound. Above it, we have the pressure and temperature. So right now, standard, it displays the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, uh, degrees Celsius, sorry. If you push on this button right next to it, it switches it to pressure in bars. So one bar equals about 15 PSI. Right now we see 8.2 bars. So it's at the maximum pressure. To the right of that again, we have two hour counters. So the first one will tell you uh, see what. So it'll tell you how many hours are on the machine. And the second one will tell you how many hours are since the last time it was reset. The third one will be the clock. So if you want to set the clock, you can set it that way. Beyond that, we have on the bottom here, the connection for the hose. So you just flip this flap up, connect the hose into there, and everything's good to go. On top, we have our water tank. It is a continuous refill system, so you can fill it with water at any time. Uh, you don't have to have any downtime. The alarm comes on, fill it up with water, and you keep going. Here we have the detergent tank. So this you can fill up with detergent. The best way to do it is actually to mix, mix it into a container and then fill it up because you don't actually see the tank in the system. On the back, as discussed, we do have the water supply as well as the, the cord. Above that, we have our basket, which you can remove. And if you remove the basket, you can then take this handle off by undoing these two screws and then just sliding it off so it becomes even shorter so you can get it into cars or into tighter spaces for storage. Once the green light's on, you're, you're ready to go. You can put the, the hose into the connection and on the handle, because this one is a bit different than the standard steam, uh, standard commercial steam kit, it has the hot water injection and the detergent. So if you push it over to the left side while holding the steam trigger, you do have a uh, hot water injection. So this actually takes water from the boiler and spits it out into the steam for a bit of a rinsing feature or to flush dirt out. On the other side, you then have the detergent. So basically that'll give you the detergent that's from the detergent tank. It'll pump it into the steam. With the system, sometimes you do have to prime it. So if you run out of detergent and it takes an air pocket because you push the button when there's none in there, you have to prime the system. It's a common thing. So we basically turn the two switches off to zero. We hold the trigger and push on the detergent button. You'll hear the machine actually humming and this is the system's pump actually working. And you'll have a stream of detergent that'll come out. When that comes out, then you'll be able to use the detergent again, flip the switches back to steam. With the machine, after about 7 minutes, 8 minutes, up to 10 minutes with the 220, uh, it'll start to heat up and the green light will come on. It can take up to 20 minutes on 110 volts. It is a normal heat up times. For water, you can use regular water in it. If you do regular water, an alarm will come on here about every 40-50 hours of use to tell you that you need to re redo your system. So you open the drain plug at the bottom. Let the water out, fill it with water, and you're going to turn the machine off. When it's cold, you're going to do this. You're going to turn the main power switch on, but not the boiler. So this will let the pump work and pump out water through the boiler so it actually rinses it out. That will come up as calc and a warning. It'll start beeping and it'll tell you to do that. Otherwise, you should do it about every 40 hours. Or you can use distilled water. If you're in a place that has lots of minerals or hard water, I would recommend using distilled water, so that'll be a nice clean boiler and you won't have to worry about uh, the buildup inside. This system has underneath it three drains. So you have the main boiler drain, 
Then you have two other drains. The two black ones here will be for the water tank, it's below the water tank, and then here for the detergent tank. So those will drain out the water tanks and detergent tanks if you have to store it. When you use the hose and the machine for all your accessories, do not pull by the hose itself, as this could damage your connection. Uh, it's not meant for that. It is a 65 pound machine, so it's not meant to be dragged around that way. Come back to the machine, push it by its handle, and use it, uh, use it again, and move it to the next place. And always, don't, don't put the stress on the hose. Um, in the next session, we'll go through the different accessories on the commercial steam kit that comes included with this machine. The only difference, as I was mentioning, is the hose is a tiny bit different, a bit longer, and has that uh, hot water injection and detergent. In this section, we're going to go through all the different accessories inside the Dupre commercial steam cleaning kit. This kit is standard on the Tusca, the Hill Super Inox, the Hill Injection, the Steam Box, and it's also optional on the Carmen Super Inox. There are lots of different accessories here, starting with the hose, then we have brushes, different hand tools, and then getting into optional accessories for the Tusca or standard for other machines. So we're going to start with the hose. On the hose, we're going to see that you have different, connect different switches on the front for different steam pressures. So you're going to see one that has one cloud, one that has two clouds, and basically what it does is the single cloud, if you switch that one on alone, you're going to have the low pressure setting. This is the most common use for uh, large surface cleaning because it will provide you with the most stable pressure. If you switch to the medium, you're going to have a bit more steam coming out. It'll still be relatively stable and you can use it for you know, most applications where you need a bit more steam if you're doing grout cleaning or tile cleaning or anything like that. And then if you switch to both the switches on, you're going to have a high pressure setting. On the high pressure setting, it's designed for short sporadic use, a minute, two minutes of heavy grease or heavy dirt. It will provide you with a lot of pressure and a lot of steam, but after a few minutes it'll drop off in pressure. This is going to be normal with all 110 volt steam cleaners on the market as they're basically, you're putting out more steam than you produce. If you have the 220 volt version, this won't be a problem that you'll experience. Beyond that, if you do have the hill injection or the Carmen Super Inox, this button here will be either an injection of hot water or an injection of detergent. So when you push that button, you'll have your boiling water injected or the detergent from the Carmen or steam box. On the inside, you'll have your steam trigger. This is the trigger that will release the steam. So without pulling this trigger, no steam will ever come out of the machine. You will have to hold it while you're using it, and this is for safety basically, so if you drop it on the ground, steam doesn't keep coming out. So it's important to know that you will have to hold it the whole time, and if you want to use your hot water injection or your detergent injection, you will have to hold it at the same time as pushing the other button. On the other side, we have the connection to the machine. So it's going to be the same for every single machine that we have. You lift the flap, stick it inside until you hear a click. You can pull it a tiny bit to make sure that it's connected well. With all of our machines, you do not want to pull the machine by the hose itself because you might disconnect through the hose or cause a short connection. So be careful and go back to the, the unit and move it by its handle or move it on its wheels. The units come with a quick release, so if we go to any accessories, we can just simply grab it, push it inside, and it'll lock into place. To remove it, you're going to push the little clip on the side and it'll slide out. While we're at it, the most important accessory that you will have is the lance. This is basically the gun that you're going to use for pretty much all the applications where you need a small jet of steam or you want to put any of the brushes on. But please remember that steam cleaning is a contact cleaning. So you do always have to work within the first couple inches of the outlet. It's not going to be a pressure washer where you're going to work from this distance away. So always work within a few inches. This is where the most of the temperature of the machine and the steam itself comes out of. If you're here, you're going to be safe to put your hand here without ever burning yourself because it drops the temperature very quickly. You'll see on the, on the lance itself, there will be a little groove. This is sort of the notch that's going to slide into all of our brushes. We have multiple different brushes for different applications. You can start with something like the nylon brush, which is one of our softer brushes. And basically you'll see inside that there's a little notch as well, that you line the two up and it slides together simply like that. You're going to have the nylon bristle brush, which you can use for grub cleaning or on more delicate surfaces that you don't want to scratch with other brushes. 
the nylon is most likely the one that you're going to turn to if you're a residential user or in light commercial use or again anything that's on a delicate surface. We can switch to brass or then to stainless and basically they're going to go up in terms of uh, aggressivity uh, to basically clean things that are a bit more difficult to clean. If you use, say, for instance, the stainless steel, you can use this on brick or on concrete or anything that is very aggressive. We're going to go into other brushes and scrapers. So we have the scraper here. This tool itself will slide on very much the same way. And you can use it for sticker removal from floors, you can use it for gum removal from hard surfaces. So it's basically a scraper with steam that comes out on either side of it. We have the plunger as well. The plunger itself is basically a neoprene seal, so if you want to use it, again, put it on. And you're going to go to the sink or uh, to any surface that you're trying to basically plunge. And you're going to put it over top of the drain, basically let the pressure build up and the heat get into the piping. And this is going to break down the grease or break down any of the, the buildup. And the pressure itself will push the, the blockage out as well. We also have the larger brush like this, which is going to be a 60 millimeter brush. This one here is going to be similar to our small nylon brush, except for it's going to be a bit larger surface, so you're going to be able to clean ovens and stoves a bit faster because it is larger. You can also take something like the little SOS pad here and you can put it over top. And what this does is basically it's almost like a Velcro, it hangs on there pretty well. And it's almost like having an SOS pad with steam. You can use it on, again, ovens, stoves, barbecues, or even onto pots and pans. The last one that we have is our triangle brush. This one here is, again, a nylon bristle. So you can use it up against walls, into corners, and pretty much everywhere that you have sort of a straight surface, so you won't have that rounded uh, basically shape of the other brushes. After that, we basically move to our window tool. The window tool here is pretty straightforward. You're going to use it for windows and on glass surfaces. You can also use it on flat stainless steel surfaces if you want to disinfect and just lightly clean. The way it works is you have a diffuser out the front and then a neoprene scree squeegee here. So the steam comes out and you can rub on the surface with the little neoprene and that will help basically get rid of dirt or any buildup on the glass itself. You can then turn it over you have a squeegee to remove any residue or any water. The next tool is one of the most important tools that we have. This one is basically the tool you're going to use for any larger surface, uh, sofas, countertop, upholstery, leather uh, furniture, into car detailing, uh, for bed bug exterminating. And the way you're going to use it most commonly is actually with a cloth. So there's a clip here that you're going to wrap a cloth around and clip on. You'll have it come out like this. When you're using it like this, what happens is the cloth itself insulates the steam. So the temperature is actually hotter than if there was no cloth there and it helps for cleaning and also disinfecting and if you're doing exterminating of bed bugs it will basically be the way to do it because it will slide on the surface and it will be much hotter and basically this whole surface here will be burning hot and that will be what you're going to use. When you're using it on upholstery or on leather furniture or in car detailing or on carpets even what happens is the dirt basically lifts up because of the heat and gets attracted to the cloth. So when you're using it, you're going to flip it over, you'll see basically dirty triangles. So you can then unclip it, you can move it to another section, flip it over until the whole thing is saturated with dirt. You'll also see underneath the tool, there is a little clip. This here basically can move in so it locks it in place so it doesn't spin. You can also undo it and then it'll spin freely. If you're doing it on uh, leather surface or on upholstery, you're going to want to clip it like this. The reason for that is so it doesn't spin over on you when you're moving it because if it spins over, the steam will come at you. You can also use this tool for drapes or any surface if you want to grab it and just basically pull down. This is the, as, as I was saying, the most important tool that we have for a lot of customers. Now we're going to move on to the floor tool. It's going to be a very similar principle to the triangle tool with the clips that you can insulate the steam. You can use it in many different ways. You can use it without a cloth. So if you want to use the, br the brushes on the floor and scrub on a porous ceramic or on stone or slate, you can then also wrap a cloth around it. If you wrap the cloth around it, you'll have two clips on either side that will allow you to clip the whole cloth around. And by doing so, you can then use it on carpet 
you want to basically extract and refresh the carpet, kill dust mites, and uh, get rid of stains and odors on carpets. You can also use it on non-slip flooring or on poor, uh, non-porous surface. So if you're on linoleum, if you're on wood floors, you can use it with cloth and it's going to basically attract all the dirt onto the cloth itself. You can also unclip two of the cloth clips and then have it drag behind. If you have a drag behind, what it does is it will attract the dirt while you scrub. And you scrub those pores and get all that dirt and grease off the surface. Then you can flip it under and absorb it all. The other thing that the tool has is on this side, like the triangle, it has the little clip that will lock it into place. If you are scrubbing, I recommend you put the lock in place so to transfer more energy onto the surface itself. And you can unclip it if you want to basically slide under furniture or on the walls or any surface that you know might have to be maneuverable. This tool, along with all of our other tools, can be connected to the extensions. If you put it on the extensions like this, it sort of slides into place. You can use one or you can use two. This will allow you to work standing up, so if you want to use the lamps for grub cleaning, you can do so. Uh, if you want to use the triangle tool for getting into corners or up, getting onto walls, or if you want to reach with this onto walls and onto different surfaces, then you're able to do so with the extensions. Or, again, you can use one extension like this. It's modular, so you can use it directly onto the hose, one extension or two extensions. So you can play around and find the, what best fits your needs and best fits the application. The extensions themselves, they're about two feet each, so they'll add you four feet if you want to stand up. They're also very rigid and they're very strong, so you don't have to worry about breaking them if you're, if you're going to scrub or if you're going to use it for flooring. We also have standard with the Hill Spurnox or with the Hill Injection, and optional for the Tusca is our carrying case. So you have all your accessories underneath and you put the machine up top. We also have our steam mop, again optional for the Tusca, but standard with other machines. And this one here is similar to a floor tool with a cloth wrapped around it, but it has a pivot head. So like a Swiffer, it can spin all the way around freely. So it's more ergonomic, you can spin around on the surface. Great for on ceilings, on walls, getting under furniture. And it comes with little microfiber pads that are Velcro and machine washable, of course. You always have to use it with a pad on it. It's not like the floor tool that you can use it without. So you always just take the pad, put it on. And again, it can be used with our extensions, which just slide into place. And you can use it for all types of flooring surfaces, all types of walls, or any flat surface that, you, that you'd like to use it. As you can see, there are a number of tools that are here. So there's not going to be a simple uh, answer to one tool for each situation. You will have different you know, options to do different types of things. If you're doing floors, you can go again from the steam mop to a floor tool to a triangle tool or even to a small little brush if you have something very aggressive or very concentrated on dirt. Take your time, get familiar with your different tools, try them on different surfaces. A lot of times what our clients have is they, they come back and try one accessory on a different surface that they didn't think of trying and it worked better than another one. If you have any questions you can give us a call for different applications or just try a different accessory.